So if you look at the first MDG, or the first SDG that are going to take place, in, since 2001, poverty fell 56% in Brazil. And what explains it? Half of it is growth, half of it is inequality fall, what we may call a middle path. So I think the secret of Brazil experience until this point was this balance between growth and inequality. So each explain half, more or less half of the extreme poverty fall and that in just uh, 12 years was enough to, to reach the MDG, the first MDG. To make a long story short, um, the, the median is growing three times faster than GDP, while the mean is growing twice faster than GDP. So it's, it's um, so it, to, to understand Brazil, you, you cannot only look at the mean and you cannot only look at GDP, you have to look at other uh, data coming from, uh, you know, household surveys. Uh, this was until 2013. What's happening now? So this is the latest data is from July 2015. It, on the left is the mean, on the right is the median. So there is a sharp reversal, reversal of growth rates in these last months. So uh, in just six months, Income growth was 2% positive in real per capita terms, now it's minus 4.3. So it's a very, very sharp, very, very fast reversal. Just six months to have an idea. In the end of 2012, uh, sorry, 2014, we had the lowest unemployment rate ever registered in Brazil. In just six months, we went back to six years ago. So it's very, very, and this is worrying, not only because of the major welfare impacts, but also politically and, and you know, the, the sharp reversal of very, if you are stagnated for a long time, it, it, you generate less uh, turbulence than if doing, you do it fast, like it's happening. So basically what happened in Brazil, uh, th th this data is only for the metro regions, okay, this, this, this data. If I look at the country as a whole, income is falling, half a percentage point, but in the metro regions where most opinion, uh, public opinion makers, politicians live in, there is a, a really a sharp fall, especially in the suburbs of the Brazilian cities, then the fall is even faster. So, um, if I look at the, these data, these big numbers, for example, the, the minus 0 0.5 in 2000, this is March 2013. Uh, this was just before we had a big demonstrations, protests in Brazilian streets. Then there was a recovery. And more recently, in the last six months, we, kept, we got quite a few protests. And uh, so this data perhaps helps us to understand uh, uh, this metropolitan data, what is happening uh, behind, one of the reasons behind uh, the rise of protests, street protests in the Brazilian case. On what is driving these protests, so I'm going to use the data that we generate from, from the protests that happened during the Confederations Cup in 2013, so it's a national household survey, 3,800 interviews. So the main, the main motivation that people present to, for protests, first, the main motivation, I have none. So the first one is no specific motivation. The second one is education and health. And the third is corruption, honest government. So this is important, uh, the, the three most important ones. So I present the first line, this motivation. If I get some evidence on change of income distribution, 
I see that people who live in the Northeast, the second most important, is the poorest, where income grew three times faster than in the Southeast, which is the rich area of the country. People are very unlikely to participate, are much more unlikely to participate in the demonstrations. So there is a, some sort of a sign that perhaps this was not a protest against inequality, okay? Maybe it could be the other way around. Of course, there is corruption, there is other reasons, there is the downturn of the, of the economy, especially when it reaches the labor market, as we saw. But there is some evidence, for example, people who do have health insurance are more likely to participate, in, but when these people they are, have a delay in public services bill, they are more likely to participate. In, so it's consistent with the idea that inequality in Brazil fell and those who didn't get the most of the win, didn't win the most, were more likely to participate in demonstrations. And we get, when we get qualitative questions like, uh, do you think the income of the poorest improved more than yours? This is very, had a, a, a big impact. And also, if you are against Bolsa Familia, which is a very well targeted conditional cash transfers in Brazil, you are more likely to participate. So, uh, uh, I would at least uh, set some doubts, you know, in, in this comparison between the Brazilian and the Occupy Wall Street and Brazilian uh, demonstrations. And the main variable, just to, to finish here, to, that explains participation is if I use internet as the main source of information. So just to leave the last point here. Um, so uh, there is a new technology in, in, in the world that allows people to organize themselves to, to do demonstrations, a new technology. Um, but the use you're gonna do of this technology depends from place to place. But the point I would like to raise here is the fact that the bottom part of the Brazilian income distribution doesn't have access to the internet. So it, it's not very likely. They, they, they cannot organize themselves. So maybe the voices of the poor will not come out, out of the internet, at least for now, maybe in a few years. So this, um, I, I, I do have some data, I don't have any more time, um, to discuss the role of assets in, you know, the change of assets, income, tax data, etc. But perhaps we could uh, use that in the, we can talk about that in the, in the discussions. Thank you.